Hey guys, Grumpy here with a quick preface to the video that's about to follow. Um, I'm making this because I didn't emphasize it enough in the video, I realize. Um, I just want to say that it is about the role that a ship serves, not about the specific ship. So in the guide, I'm going to use a lot of herons and hammerheads and lashers to um, build my fleets. These ships are interchangeable. You use whatever ships you like more. Um, it is just about the role that they serve. And then following my fleet um, building principle, which is, you know, a few anchors, um, twice to three times as many midlines as anchors, and then as many CQC ships as uh, midlines, if not more CQC ships. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear. And then another thing I wanted to point out is that these kites, these white kites here, they delineate where my fleet ends that I'm demonstrating and where storage begins. So um, in vanilla Star Sector, there's no bays, like there's no like bay one, bay two, bay three, where I can store a fleet. Um, it's just all the ships that I have and then, you know, the rest of the ships that I'm going to bring in to demonstrate. So the kite was my idea to separate them, but I didn't mention it. So if you're wondering why there's just a kite sitting there, that's the reason why. Um, other than that, I'm going to get out of here. Enjoy the guide. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Also, consider subscribing if you like the content that I'm making. All right, bye. Hey, guys. Grumpy here with a guide to fleet composition. In this guide, we're going to go over um, the fleets I like to build for the early game, the mid game, and the late game, and then talk you through my fleet building philosophy and principles that I have in mind. So the very early game, credits are limited and hull mods are hard to come by. Um, they're very expensive at the very start of the game. So ship selection and ship versatility is going to be very limited. Um, but things I look to look for in the early game is an anchor. So something that can um, anchor my fleet. It's usually going to be a destroyer. So here we have the Drover. It's a phenomenal anchor um, in the very early game. And also we have a hammerhead down here. Um, the hammerhead is also an okay anchor, but let's talk through the drover and why you want to get one as soon as possible. The drover as an anchor brings a lot to the table. First of all, it's a carrier, so you're already bringing fighters to the fight, which is phenomenal. What I like to put in the drover are talent interceptors. So talent interceptors are great in the early game. Um, you're going against a lot of unshielded targets, so things like pirates, um, the Ludic Path, Maybe you're doing small bounties against like pirate targets. Um, the talent interceptors are going to shred those targets. Um, as we talked about in the carrier guide, they have high explosive munitions and then also fragmentation damage. So the high explosive is going to blow away the armor and then the Vulcan cannon is going to start doing direct damage to the hull. In the early game, most frigates barely have any armor. So a single talon out of this wing, you have four in a wing, can easily blow away the armor uh, from most frigates at this level. That's that's per talon, and you have four in a wing. The special ability of the Drover Reserve Deployment is going to give you an extra talon, so you'll actually have ten talons on the battlefields. Um, that's going to be devastating against any um, any pirate raid, any like small fleet the two talent wings are going to carry you pretty far for a pretty long um through all of the early game next up the drover has four small missile slots which is incredible um you want to look for missile slots on ships in the early game the more missile slots you get the better um the reason is harpoon mrms are absolutely lethal um they're lethal all throughout the game but in the early game, when ships don't have a lot of hull, don't have a lot of armor, um, and rarely have shields, well, not rarely have shields, but sometimes they'll have shields, Harpoon MRMs will finish off a target very quickly. Um, usually, you don't even have to engage the target. You can just fire Harpoons at it. And the sheer number of Harpoons that you get is going to be enough to overwhelm their PD and usually overwhelm their shields, honestly. Um... So that's definitely something that you want to consider in the early game. The Drover has four small slots, so more Harpoons is more good. <laughs> um, then next up, 
the drover can serve double duty as a freighter. Um, so freighters are interesting in the early game. They aren't necessary until you get to a certain point. Um, you can honestly just get by with the innate fuel and uh, cargo capacity that most ships have. Just running a general um, well-rounded fleet without anything too funny um, is going to give you enough cargo that you can sell. You know, you can still trade goods and make a profit. But the Drover doesn't really need a lot of ordnance points, so I what I like to do is put expanded cargo holds on it and auxiliary fuel tanks. The expanded cargo holds is okay. It gives you 110 cargo capacity. That's nothing to write home about. Um, but what's more important is the fuel capacity is up to 112. In the early game, 112 fuel goes a long way. Most of your ships burn one fuel per light year. So, uh, yeah, so the fuel capacity is 112, and the drover burns two fuel, because it's a destroyer, per light year. So if we look at the map, um, it the drover itself, with that um, auxiliary fuel capacity, means that it can go 50 light years away. So here's my colony. If I just had the drover by itself, it could reach all the way to Beta Calico and back. Just from that one mod, um, that's insane. <laughs> so when you have a couple of ships with auxiliary fuel tanks, um, you can really, you're mostly going to be traveling around the core worlds anyway, um, maybe a little bit outside of them. But having a lot of fuel is just going to mean that you won't get caught out here in the wilds um, and not have a way back to the core worlds. So the drover being able to serve dub double duty like that um, is really nice. For the rest of your fleet, you don't ever have to worry about running out of fuel when you go out exploring or doing bounties. So that's why I strongly recommend the Drover. Um, the Drovers are a little more difficult to come by, and I think they're relatively expensive. I think most carriers are expensive in this game. So if you can't get a Drover, the Hammerhead is also an okay substitute. So what I recommend is the using the Auto Fit for Balanced, and then modifying it slightly. So getting rid of the heavy mortars and replacing those with heavy maulers. And then also getting rid of blast doors and replacing that with uh, another heavy mauler. And this ship is going to carry you through the early game. It becomes a midline. We'll talk about that a little later on. Um, but this is a good anchor. It's a great DPS ship. Um, does a ton of damage. You can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with other destroyers. Um, if you get lucky, you can take down a cruiser with this. Um, it just comes down to player skill at that point, but this is a really good ship. Um, it doesn't have the same utility that a Drover does, but it is still a solid ship. Um, and then finally, to round out your fleet, uh, let's go ahead and get rid of that. To round out your fleet, you're going to have a handful of frigates. Um, the kite over here with no ordnance points, that delineates the end of the fleet. So it would be these um, nine ships. Uh, you have your Drover as your anchor, and then your CQC ships, also your midlines. Um, the Lashers would serve as midline ships. The Brawler, the Omen, and the Vigilance would serve as CQC ships, uh, along with the Wolf. And that would be your fleet design. Um, that's how I would design it. The Buffalo, you don't need at the start of the game. I would bring the Buffalo in, though, as soon as you can afford one. And once you start doing trading... That requires um, a larger cargo capacity than like the 600 to 700 that you start the game with. If you can, go for the Hedge Buffalo. It's the one with the orange painting on it. The thing that sets the orange Hedge uh, Buffalo apart from the others is that it has Miltara subsystem built in. Which one, that's a logistic mod so you don't have to be restricted on logistic mods. And two, it's going to save you 10 ordnance points, which allows you to build in, or not build in, but add um, expanded cargo holds and auxiliary fuel tanks. And that's going to get you 572 cargo capacity, and then also 150 fuel capacity, which we demonstrated how effective uh, having 100 fuel is. You can get to the edge of the universe and back. So that would be um, what an early game fleet looks like. Some things to consider are getting a shepherd. A shepherd is going to help you out if you're doing any kind of surveying. So between salvage gantry and surveying equipment, 
you're going to increase the rewards that you get, and it's also going to cost you less to survey. Uh, for what it's worth, it's an okay combat ship. Um, you can put something like a Vulcan Cannon on it, and then uh, Swarmer Missiles, if I have any. Uh, maybe not a Vulcan Cannon. Maybe a Light Dual Machine Gun. So something like this turns it into an okay um, combat ship. The Light Dual Machine Gun does uh, kinetic damage, the Swarmers do high explosive damage, and then you also have the Bora Drones, which have mining lasers on them. It does a very small amount of energy damage, but at the very early game, for whatever it's worth, I mean, 6 times 30 is 180 DPS. That's on par with some um, other energy weapons in the medium tier. So you can... Um, you can use this as a combat ship. Um, if you are, I recommend building it, or not building in, but adding militarized subsystems so that you can just make it a little more effective in combat. Next up, we have the Cerberus. The Cerberus is a really good ship. It's a great early game ship. You have four ballistic slots, one of those being medium. Um, but the drawback is that it needs makeshift shield generator because it doesn't have a shield by default. Um, and the shield that it gives you isn't really effective, so that is something to consider. And then finally, you want to keep an eye out for a Tempest. The Tempest is a big ask. Um, I think it's anywhere from 40 to 50,000 credits, something like that. But if you can get one, they're phenomenal. Um, what you do is you put something like a Phase Lance on there, or you can put um, Pulse Lasers. Um, ion Pulses are also good. Um, and then this would be your CQC ship. This is a very powerful ship. We covered it in the CQC guide. Um, even just having one of these on your uh, in your fleet is going to help you out tremendously. I built in safety overrides so it maintains its high top speed, um, but it isn't really necessary in the early game. Um, you don't have to go with safety overrides if you don't want to. And then finally, um, let's talk about the mule. The mule is a is a insane ship. If you can get your hands on a mule um, in the very early game, it's going to carry you a long way. First of all, it has a hybrid slot that supports medium or yeah, medium um, missiles or ballistics. So we talked about medium missiles and the power that they have. Um, something like an Annihilator rocket pod, a Harpoon MRM, um, not the Cyclone Reaper, but the uh, Typhoon. Right, you can put this on a mule, and the mule is going to have pretty decent cargo capacity and okay fuel capacity, but it's one of those double duty ships um, that's really going to help you out in combat. Um, we talked about, you know, missile slots. So it has three missile slots, which is going to help you out there. And it also has decent ballistics. Uh, so it has three ballistics, one of those being um, more so for the rear. But on the side, you can put something like rail guns. You can put something like railguns and on the front, support it with like a Typhoon Reaper launcher, and now all of a sudden um, you have like a, a tanky ship, a very tanky ship, that can do uh, a lot of damage to uh, a stubborn target. So like an enemy mule or um, an enemy colossus, if like you're fighting off pirates in a bigger fleet, a mule can save your life. Uh, it does need to be supported though, so don't just leave it by itself. Um, but definitely it can do a lot of damage and support the rest of your fleet. So that would be an early game fleet. Um, maybe 9 to 10 ships. Most of those being frigates. Um, that's how I would design it. So we can go ahead and put these up. Um, so transitioning over to the middle game. Um, you would probably not have a drover anymore. You wouldn't have any lashers. Um, which things you would bring in would be a new anchor, so a bigger anchor. So those are going to be either the Aurora, the Champion, or a Heron. Um, next up, you're going to have, definitely going to have a Tempest by then. An Omen, you're not going to need the Buffalo anymore. The Wolf. And then you would have a bunch of um, hammerheads with you. So if I can go ahead and move these in here. 
Also, your freighters would be upgraded. And then instead of the shepherd, you would have a salvage gantry. But we're going to go over all this. Okay, so this would be more so a mid-game fleet. This is kind of something that I look for when I'm designing my fleet. Um, first of all, you would choose one of these three as your um, new anchor. So still following that same philosophy of anchor, midline, CQC. Uh, it's just that your anchor got a little bigger in the mid-game. Um, so now you can support a cruiser using like your freighters. And you're going to have a lot more credits to play with. So you can now afford one of these ships. So I would definitely recommend the Champion if you can get your hands on one. Um, the Aurora is um, a phenomenal ship in its own right. We demonstrated that in the midline video. Um, just having access to the Sabos and the Harpoon MRMs is really going to carry you. And then the the Heron is, is so good. Um, <laughs> the problem is that I think it costs 150,000 credits, which is very expensive um, in the mid game. But it is a great ship to have. I like to design it with the tridents in mind and broadswords. Um, broadswords for shield pressure, tridents for more uh, missile support. And just putting a hyper velocity driver on it. But that would be how I would design like a midline fleet. Things to talk about. Oh, uh, sorry, mid game fleet. Things to talk about are um, you're adding hammerheads as your new midline. So these would be the th ships that are your fleet rounders. As you add more hammerheads to your fleet, it's just going to become better and better. Um, your frigates now become CQC ships, so these are what's going to be in the face of the enemy. So your brawler, your omens, which you'll have two of now. Um, the vigilance and the tempest, which you'll have plenty of tempest by the mid-game. You can afford them pretty reliably. And then also wolves still hanging around. Wolves are good ships. Um, they kind of fall off towards the end game because they, um, they don't, they're not very tanky. Um, and they tend to get blown up by um, missiles. Like as fleets get bigger and bigger, um, you just have more missile spam, and they can't really stay in the fight for that long. And then you're gonna upgrade your freighters to a Colossus, a Phaeton, and then a Salvage Rig. The Salvage Rig, I just go ahead and commit, and I build in augmented drive fields and military subsystems. Um, it's worth building it in because these are gonna be in your fleet all the time. And then for hull mods, I like to add survey equipment and efficiency overhaul. And what this does is it reduces the very high cost of the um, of the salvage rig. So that would be something that like a mid fleet would look like. You would have one of these. I don't want to confuse anybody. So you would only have one of these. One anchor midline ships and then um, CQC ships. And then your freighters would be upgraded to the Colossus. Uh, the Phaeton isn't necessary. It's only necessary if you're doing like a lot of exploration. Um, it is overkill at this level. But it's better than going for a Dram. Which I don't even have in this. It's better than going for a Dram. Um, I think the Dram is an unnecessary ship. You don't need it in the early game. Uh, it's better just go to Phaeton. Um, it's going to give you... It's more efficient. Uh, it gives you more fuel capacity. For only two burn, fuel burn per um, per light year. So I just go with that. Um, but this would be what a uh, mid mid game fleet looks like. Um, so we can go ahead and transition over to an end game fleet. So first of all, your freighters are going to get upgraded. Your Colossus is going to get replaced with the Atlas, and then you're going to have bigger anchors. So in this case. We're, our new anchors are these legions. Um, yeah, you're probably not going to be able to. You'll probably only have one capital ship. Um, you probably won't be able to to, uh, to support two in the as you get to the very early end game. Um, but that's fine. And then your midline starts to get filled out a little more. So now you have uh, two herons. You're going to have um, another Aurora. And then um, you can start bringing in your missile ships. And then finally, you can start adding PD, dedicated PD crafts to your fleet. Um, and then we can also grab the Eradicator and talk about it. 
So this would be what an endgame fleet looks like. Um, again, it follows all the same principles. It follows all the same principles as before. You have an anchor. Here would be your midline ships. So these would be um, your carriers. Then your Aurora for just a good fleet rounder. A champion as a good fleet rounder. Your Griffin providing additional missiles to combat. And then your Eradicator. Ideally this would be Eradicator P. This is what's going to deal with enemy frigates and destroyers. Um, it's a very fast ship. And then it fires in multiple directions. So it can do a lot of damage very quickly to uh, unsuspecting targets. Um, and then it also has a Ballistic Range Rider and Integrated Targeting Unit. So it's going to be able to reach things that are very fast and maneuverable and trying to get away from it. And then finally you have dedicated PD crafts that you can start adding to your fleet. So what these do are they sit alongside your anchor or you can intersperse them in your midline. And they're just going to swat down um, all the PD, all the annoying like missile spam that's going to start happening as you get into the late game. Uh, with bigger and bigger fleets, I think I mentioned this already. There's just going to be more and more missiles, so having dedicated PD is going to help out there. Um, your, um, you can start putting away some of these hammerheads just to save on fuel costs and supply costs. Um, and then finally, you have your CQC. Um, uh, I would definitely recommend more brawlers, um, more omens, and tempests. Um, you don't necessarily need wolves, but if wolves are all you have, if you're building this fleet from the beginning to the end game, then wolves are okay. Um, just be aware that they are very susceptible to missile spam, uh, which you're going to be facing as you go on. Um, and then finally, I want to give a shout out to the Atlas. Uh, I usually forego the Colossus entirely just for an Atlas. And specifically, I'll build into my Atlas Augmented Dry Field and Miltrai Subsystem. Um, I just commit and build these in because the the Atlas is just so convenient. First of all, it doesn't cost much to bring along. So fuel, light year, jump cost is 4.8. Its supply cost is about 6 a month. Um, so that's, that's nothing. Um, obviously, that's reduced with efficiency overhaul. And then expanded cargo holds um, will give you an additional 938 cargo capacity, which is nuts, right? Um, so I'll usually have two of these in a fleet. Um, and then also I'll have uh, a salvage rig so that as I go for more exploration and fight bigger bounties, I'll get rewarded more for just bringing the salvage rig with me. And then even with this large of a fleet, having a single uh, Phaeton is still more than enough for carrying around this many ships but if you wanted to you could upgrade to the prometheus i find it a little unnecessary i don't add a prometheus until i'm i have like three or four capitals in my fleet so that's the guide um i hope it was helpful as long as you keep this ratio in mind you'll always do well um a few anchors two to three times as many midlines as anchors and then as many, if not a few more, CQC ships as midlines. Um, if you keep that in mind, your fleet will be well balanced, well rounded. Um, you can take on, you know, exploration, bounties, things like that. Um, but other than that, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for all the support. Um, I really appreciate it, guys. Um, if you do like the guides, consider subscribing. Um, there'll be more content on the way. Other than that, Grumpy out.